Hey y'all, and welcome back to my little corner of the internet. For today's video, I want to do a little coffee talk with y'all. About overwhelm. This week, one of my best friends called me because she was feeling incredibly overwhelmed with school, with work, with hopping between cities. It was all becoming too much for her in that moment. And she knew because of my higher than normal levels of anxiety that it was a problem that I dealt with often. And maybe I'd know how to help. That caught me by surprise, that she thought that I knew how to deal with it. So I took a moment to think about it. Had I really figured out how to deal with being so overwhelmed? So I'm gonna share with you all the things that I shared with her. So hopefully, if life is becoming overwhelming to you or becoming incredibly stressful, Hopefully these tips will help keep you sane because her and I are both strong women, work all the time, even though our mental health can become compromised easily. We're both highly anxious, and at least for me, I do things in a very particular way in order to avoid becoming so anxious that I have a panic attack. And I don't, I'm not claiming to have any type of anxiety disorder. I've never been diagnosed with anything. I've only done counseling for a short amount of time and I couldn't afford to keep going back. And I really did not like my counselor. So all of these tips are stuff that I've trial and error and figured out for myself. So long ramble over, let's get into my first tip. Tip number one, routine. I have to have a routine. I have to have a schedule, I have to know what's happening now and what's happening next so my brain can easily switch from one task to the next. Part of that routine is having a morning and night routine so I don't even have to think about what to do next. I already know. It's also constantly evolving, trying to get better. In the morning I always get up, get ready for work, make lemon water, coffee and breakfast and then do a calendar check-in with my partner. He can live in more free flow and chaos, but because of my need for structure, we have a shared calendar and we make sure that we both know what's going on in each other's day. So I guess tip number two is calendaring. There's tons of different ways to do this. You can find tons of videos. I've tried a bunch of different ways. I've used a bullet journal, Actually, a digital bullet journal. I never used a paper one because I am paperless as I try to be low waste. And maybe one day I'll show that to y'all. But more recently, since I've been on my laptop every day now for work, I've started calendar blocking. I'm still seeing if that's going to be the best thing for me, but it's working for now. And let me know in the comments what your favorite way to calendar is or to write a schedule is. So my third tip, get enough sleep. I don't do this, my friend doesn't do this, but we try. I try to get eight hours every night, usually only get seven, and I'm one of those people that needs nine hours. Unfortunately, I'm not able to get that, so I have to make the quality of my sleep better because I can't have more quantity. So I have a very short night routine, brush my teeth, wash my face, drink a cup of tea. We have these two bedtime teas that we choose from and one is more like calming and one is more like sleep support. So whichever one I need, if I go straight from working to my night routine, I usually need the calming one to be able to wind down and actually like relax. Even this week when I got home late one day, I still immediately put on a pot of tea and it felt so nice to drink my warm tea in my cozy bed. Tip number four, stress relief tea. So I also have kava tea that I'll use whenever I'm feeling stressed out and I really just need to sit down and focus on creative work. So any kind of stress relief tea is really helpful to incorporate into your healthy life which brings me to tip number five, eat healthy. I always start the morning with a big bowl of oatmeal or a bowl of coconut yogurt with granola. And we usually also have a small smoothie every morning to get all those, to get all that nutrients from fruits and vegetables in. 
early in the day. And then I'll have a big healthy lunch around one or two. Tip number six is that I limit my number of cups of coffee to a day. I only have two cups of coffee a day and that's it. If I want any more, decaf. And I know decaf is blasphemous, but I'll do it. If I really want just a warm cup of happiness, I'll do it. Because I'll drink one on my way to work in the morning, and then I'll drink one close to the end of my shift and on my drive home because I'm going to jump right into work again. And this seems to be working for me. Tip number seven, meditation. And something that I need to incorporate back into my life that I was doing every day for a while and I stopped for some reason. Everyone's talking about meditation and the benefits of it, but if you are someone that struggles with high anxiety or becoming overwhelmed, five minutes a day, sit down and I count my breaths. That seems to be the best way for me to go into that like transient meditative state because in general I'm really good with numbers so I think my brain can just like count my breaths and that can fade into the background and like I'm still counting them but I'm not conscious of it at all and then I'll like snap out of it and I'll be like I don't know it's it's pretty cool but I've also been meditating off and on since middle school I used to take a five minute break when I was at work and just go sit outside and meditate and I need to get back into doing that and if someone's gonna give you a hard time about taking five minutes to go meditate, tell them it's a smoke break. They don't need to know you don't actually smoke. That's what I do if somebody asks me where I'm going. Tip number seven. Eight? What are we on? Seven, I think. Tip number seven, work out. Again, everybody says this, everybody knows this. We all need to work out more. I don't work out at all. I hardly work out, but I work a job on my feet and I lift heavy things. So that counts, right? I'm pretty sure my job counts, so I don't have to work out. But if I'm having a hard time focusing when I'm sitting at my computer, or I'm starting to feel overwhelmed, I'll go outside and take a walk, come back, and usually be able to sit down and focus. Or if I'm really starting to feel overwhelmed, a 20 minute run at whatever slow jogging pace feels good to me helps tremendously. Tip number eight or nine, whatever we're on. Schedule time to do nothing. You can't really predict when your brain is just gonna be done. Done with work, done with stuff for the day. So if you have do nothing time scheduled, it's fairly easy usually to move stuff around to make that do nothing time when you need it and to reschedule stuff you need to get done later. Don't fight through it. I tend to fight through it and end up getting less done over the week than if I would have just taken that hour nap and then worked and been so focused that I got much more done. Tip number nine, hugs. I'm not a hugger. I'm not, I'm not usually someone that likes to be touched by anyone except for my partners or people that I've gotten like close with but I understand my own need for hugs. And I forget what the exact statistic is, but it's something like you need eight hugs a day or something to be at your, to be your happiest. And I'll try and find a link to that and leave it for all down below. But something I learned about myself at least at festivals is that hugs really do keep me grounded and keep me from feeling so overwhelmed and anxious. So even if you're like me and you're the hard ass at work, find someone that you can hug, be soft occasionally, and actually take that hug that someone offers. It's good for your mental health. Tip number 10. The self-care thing is bullshit? Kinda. Only kinda. Self-care is important, but I think part of self-care that nobody really focuses on is taking care of the space that you occupy. So not just taking care of your body, but taking care of your home. Because your home is an extension of yourself. And if it's messy and cluttered, then overwhelm becomes much more likely. When you see that pile of boxes that needs to be taken care of, when you see those papers you need to put away, 
even if you're not consciously thinking about it, your subconscious has a to-do list. So I usually take one day a week to focus on putting my home in order so that I don't get sensory overload just from everything going on around me. And I wipe down all the counters and I meal prep and I do the laundry, do my face mask, and I do all these things so that the rest of the week I don't have to think about them at all. I can just take a deep breath knowing that's something that's done that I don't have to worry about. Tip number 11. Everybody can get access to CBD oils now, which I think is an amazing thing and can be a huge stress reliever. So at our local farmer's market, we can actually get CBD oil from a tincture stand. But you can also order CBD oil online or find it at, I actually saw an ad for it at Bed Bath & Beyond the other day. I need to double check that that was real, but it came to my email from them, so you might actually be able to find it there. So if you do all of these things and you still get overwhelmed and anxious and stressed, I would try CBD oil. It's not something that I do all the time, but I do think it's incredibly helpful. And if you're one of those lucky people that live in a legal state, I know when I was in Colorado, even smoking a sativa strand with a CBD strand was incredible for lifting all of my anxiety and keeping me awake and focused. And I can tell everyone who's worried about becoming a couch potato from smoking a joint, if you pick the right strands, and you're a driven person, you don't really sit on the couch all day. You can still get shit done. Now obviously, this is not for everyone, but these are the things that have helped me, and these are the things that I told her. And I hope at least one of these tips can help you. And I hope this all makes sense because I didn't script it, and I feel like I've been pretty rambly, and I hope it all comes together in posts. So I'll try and pop some links down below with different sources that will help with some of these tips, and also my social links, my Twitter, my Instagram, my LinkedIn, Follow me on all of that. Subscribe to this YouTube channel if any of these tips were helpful. Hit the notification bell so you know when I post new videos. And let me know in the comments how you deal with overwhelm. Maybe for the next Coffee Talk, I'll make a video on how I deal with a panic attack if it gets to that level of overwhelm and anxiety because I have actually been able to stop myself from having panic attacks. Um, sometimes I can't, but sometimes I, I can, and there's certain things that I turn to that work and that help me, help me deal with that situation. Let me know if y'all wanna see that video. Also hit the like button if you, also hit the like button if you found this video helpful, and I will see y'all next week. I'm moving next week, so look forward to seeing a, a moving vlog and maybe a tour of this place that I've actually been staying at for months now, but I'm actually officially moving next week. <laughs> and I'll be making a video about that and having a nesting partner and what that means next week. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna end this rambly video now. Thank y'all for watching. I am the Vegan Rainbow. Bye y'all.